Okay, this is uh, video number three for week uh, eight. We're going to be talking about uh, revising academic writing, uh, continuing on with that. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about homophones. Um, you may have heard the word homonyms before. Homonyms are words that sound alike but have different meanings. Homophones are a little bit different. They're a specific type of homonym that sounds alike and has different meanings, but they have different spellings. The problem with homophones is that writers often end up using the wrong word. And it's very, very common. And we're going to take a look at the most common issues with homophones. I've put two websites up for you here. One is a big long list of British English homophones that you can take a look at. And I'm going to give you that link in the um, handout that you're going to get for this week. But we're going to take a look at the 20 most commonly confused ones. So the ones that really give people trouble. Okay, so here I am at the site. English is definitely a weird, weird language. And if English isn't your first language, you probably notice that there are some very odd things that happen in the English language. Homophones are one of those things. Um, because they're pronounced exactly the same way, but spelt differently, okay, and have different functions. There's some very common ones. I'm going to draw your attention to a few in particular that we really notice in a lot of writing for healthcare. And the number one homophone issue is probably around the words effect and effect. If we're pronouncing things carefully, we should actually be pronouncing these slightly different. So we should be saying affect versus effect. But again, because English speakers tend to be lazy, we just say effect, effect. And it sounds exactly alike. There is a very specific difference between the two. So affect with an A is used to indicate influence. So if I were to say medicine did not affect her the way the doctor had hoped, I'm talking about influence there. Effect with an E is a noun, okay? So it's a name of something that's happening. And you'll, if you take a look at the example, you'll see the new medicine had negative side effects. That's the most common error that people in healthcare make. Whenever we're talking about side effects, we're talking about effects spelled with an E, okay? So try to keep that one in mind because you'll, you'll see it all the time. Make sure if you're talking about side effects, you're talking about, um, or I'm sorry, you're spelling it with an E, but if you're talking about influence, you're spelling it with an A. Then and then is also, that's number two on the list, one that gives people trouble. We use then with an A, T-H-A-N, when we're talking about comparisons. So if I were to say, my cat is much cuter than your cat, I'm comparing my cat to your cat. So I'm going to use T-H-A-N. Then with an E is used to indicate the passage of time or when something happens. So if I were to say, and then I decided to end the video, I'm talking about a moment in time. Okay, so I'm going to use T-H-E-N. Just going to scroll a little bit further. You can review these on your own, but I wanted to... Uh, pull your attention to there, there, and there. That also relates again to the apostrophe issue. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, we use there three different times. So there is usually used as a pronoun or an adverb, but it's referring to a place in space. Okay, so over there. There, T-H-E-I-R, is a pronoun, so it means belonging to them, okay? So the students put their coats in the closet, right? The patient must fill out their forms, the forms belonging to them. There with the apostrophe, T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E, is the jamming together of they are. So I might say something like, they're currently passing the class they are passing the class. They are currently in term one. They're currently in term one, okay? So watch for that. Again, you'll see a lot of people make mistakes with this. Your and your, okay? Another very common one. 
Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is the contraction for you are. So if I want to say uh, you are happy, I could instead say you're happy with the apostrophe. But Y-O-U-R without the apostrophe is a pronoun. It means belonging to you. So I might say, please open your book. Please make sure that your schedule is correct. Okay, complete your test. It's belonging to you. So I'm gonna use Y-O-U-R in that particular instance. And then the last one, that I want to review with you, or the second to last one, I should say, is it's and it's. We've talked about that one before when we talked about the apostrophe, but it's an important one, okay, because people make mistakes with it a lot. Remember that IT apostrophe S is the contraction for it is. So it's Friday, okay, it's uh, raining, okay, it is, it's without the apostrophe is the possessive form of it. So we use that when something belongs to it. The example on the screen, the cat is licking its paws. Okay, the machine, uh, the photocopier has trouble with its document feeder, the document feeder belonging to the photocopier. And then finally, the other one that I wanted to draw your attention to is principle and principle. Principle spelled P-L-E at the end is a noun meaning a basic truth or a law. So if I were to say that one of the principles of nursing is being caring, I'm meaning to say that one of the basic truths about nursing is being caring. Principal, with P-A-L on the end, usually means the head of a school or an organization, or it can mean a sum of money. Okay, so if I were to say, the principal's name is Mrs. Jones. I'm referring to the head of a school or an organization. I could also say, right, the principal that um, is uh, owing on the house, okay, is $200,000. In that case, I'm talking about an amount of money. So I'm going to use P-A-L. But normally, when we're talking about principles, we're talking about them as the PLE form. We're talking about basic truths or laws. In our next video, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So grab yourself a cup of coffee um, or something else, maybe something else to drink. I don't know, whatever you like. We're going to take a look at some fun stuff to help reinforce the comma, the apostrophe, and homophones.